Just over two years ago, NASA announced that SpaceX would build the human landing system to deliver the first astronauts to the lunar surface. It's been a half century since we were there. We held a robust competition for the first landing. And SpaceX is making good progress. We have big goals for our Artemis program. About a mission a year to the lunar surface for stays for our astronauts up to 30 days. And today's announcement is about maintaining that cadence. It's about maintaining our excellence as the world's top space program and to maintain that for generations to come. It's about maintaining collaboration with our industry partners who will enable generations of explorers and pioneers to live and work on other planets. So we're here today to make an exciting announcement about a second lander award. An additional different lander will help ensure that we have the hardware necessary for a series of landings to carry out the science and technology development on the surface of the moon and that what we do on the surface of the moon is in preparation for us to go to Mars. I've said it before, we want more competition. We want two landers, and that's better, and it means that you have reliability, you have backups. It benefits NASA, it benefits the American people. These are public-private partnerships. It's the new way that we go to the moon. It helps NASA share the risk, the technical risk, and the financial risk, the cost, to enable, at the end of the day, mission success. This new lander will be built and operated according to NASA's sustaining lunar lander requirements, which needless to say, when you put astronauts in that environment, those requirements are vigorous. Um, as the administrator nope. mentioned, uh, this lander is targeted for Artemis V, which is really the intersection of our, our test flight and our long-term plans. Um, but I'd like to kind of talk to you about the other missions and then talk a little bit more specific on five. So the administrator talked about Artemis I, an incredible, flawless mission. I think we've used a lot of uh, superlatives around it and all of them well earned. And uh, the data that we have from that mission is informing our next one, which uh, the crew being here in D.C. the past two days, I've only heard the stories of them. I haven't seen them, but uh, the stories certainly have gotten around about an incredible crew that will fly in Artemis II test out our ECLIS systems, fly around the moon, and really give us that confidence to fly crews on every mission thereafter. Um, as the administrator also mentioned, Artemis III will have the SpaceX lander on it and the Axiom suits, uh, critical developments for us returning humans to the moon, where we'll have those humans to explore that history that is the South Pole, four and a half billion years of solar system history uh, right there on the moon, and we use the crew's decision-making skills and dexterity to really get samples to bring back uh, for our science mission director and partners to, uh, uh, to use and explore further. And I always told Thomas Erbuchen, he opened that last sample last year of the uh, Apollo program, I think, to challenge us to get back there sooner. So uh, the, the gauntlet has been laid down. <clears throat> on Artemis IV, that really critical test flight where we bring, bring on the exploration upper stage, our co-manifested payload capability where I have our international partner, uh, the uh, European Space Agency and, and JAXA with the IHAB module, uh, continuing to build our capability where we'll go to Gateway for the first time and use gate, Gateway and the uh, SpaceX lander uh, built to the sustainable lander requirements to go down to the surface 
and uh, and bring the crew safely back home. So today's that, announcement, it is an important and exciting next step for the human landing system program. And now we will have two providers and providing that competition that the administrator talked about uh, earlier. It also helps us with then a more diversified industrial base and that will help us advance innovation in the future. And that's really part of the American dream. I'm grateful for the continued strong congressional and stakeholder support for the human landing system program. You know, it shows that they're with us, that we're all together as a nation as we approach our return to the moon. We are really excited today to be working with Blue Origin and all of their partners. On behalf of Blue Origin and the national team, I want to thank NASA personally. Uh, we're very honored and humbled to be part of this incredible experience. Uh, we're looking forward to participating on Artemis V and we're looking forward to working together. Uh, this national team has been working together for a number of years and we're really maturing our efforts now and uh, we're very excited about the Appendix P effort. The Blue Origin Blue Moon Lunar Lander is uh, configured in two configurations. The first configuration is a crew configuration that will be able to land four astronauts anywhere on the surface of the moon day or night. That will be the first mission that we fly as part of Artemis V. This vehicle is also can be configured for a cargo landing mission able to carry up to 20 metric tons in a round trip a reusable configuration or 30 metric tons to the surface to form the foundation of habitats and other permanent infrastructure. Uh, as part of the national team, we're very fortunate to have Lockheed Martin, who is building the CIS Lunar Transporter. The CIS Lunar Transporter will provide refueling services from low Earth orbit to NRHO and the parking orbit of where our lander is located.